In just the same way that adding clips to your sequence and removing them depends on this insert overwrite mode at the top of the timeline, same thing applies when you're moving things around. So here I'm in overwrite mode. If I grab this crossing shot and drag this over the from the ground shot, you'll notice I get a highlight. And you'll also notice that the clip snaps to the edges of things. This snapping is, if I just put this back, it's a feature of this button up here. This turns on snap to event. And in fact, in the user preferences, there are options for what will and won't snap. If I turn this off, I can just drag this very, very gradually across anything and it doesn't jump into position. Sometimes you're going to want it, sometimes you're not. And if I want to have it switched off generally, as I do now, but temporarily snap, I can hold the shift key down and I get the same feature. So a lot of editors like to have that off anyway, because it's no great cost to hold the shift key down every now and then. But generally speaking, I think I'm kind of lazy. I tend to have this turned on. So I'm going to turn on snapping and I'm going to grab this shot and drag it onto the clip. And as you can probably guess, this is just going to leave a gap where it was and overwrite the shot that's there. I'm just going to undo that. Now, if I instead turn on the insert mode and do the same thing, now everything shuffles around and I've moved one shot into the space and pushed the other one out of the way. And that means there's no gap and I can shuffle things around to my heart's content this way. And when you're working on your assembly edit, which is the first phase of your edit generally, you'll be using this option a lot because it's a very quick way of moving things around. You can still separate them out. They're not tied together. But if you do drag things around, it'll all shuffle around quite neatly. You can, of course, very easily move things to other tracks. And you'll notice, though, if I put this back down, of course, I've lost the audio because I put that clip on a video only track. I can also lasso clips and move them around together. But notice if I move this clip up to the V2 track, I leave a gap, which is not quite the same as I would expect if I was removing it, perhaps by clicking on the ripple delete button. Now, if I just put that back again, I've lost the audio. See what happens when I do the same thing without my sync locks turned on. If I click and drag the clip up, everything moves along. And this is because the sync locks are there to prevent you losing the relative positions of the clips on the timeline. I'll just undo that.